This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. Well, Anthony, here we are again. <laughs> Good to be together. It is indeed. Uh, what a pleasure. Uh, and, uh, and this time in Nashville, of all things, here we are. But, uh, yes. Uh, but it's uh, Ephesians. And uh, what, a, what a wonderful uh, book this is. Rich I, pieces. Indeed. We, we're talking about doing this, and uh, I've been looking forward to it. Because I have too. I love this, this material. It I covers this everything. Word. It does. Everything. everything it, you can possibly it's, it's amazing writing, isn't it? It is. It, uh, uh, so rich and yes. uh, so much in it. Yeah. I mean, you think that Paul was in prison when he wrote this. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. And near to his death, he was going to be beheaded within a few years. So we're talking probably the early 60s, yes. somewhere 62, in there. 62, maybe. Yes, 62, absolutely. maybe 63, mm -hmm. somewhere amazing. there. Amazing. Yeah. That's lovely. And uh, not much question that Paul was the author, I think. Uh, Everybody generally accepts mm. that Colossians was Paul's, mm, and if no. you accept that Colossians was Paul's, you, you've got to recognize Absolutely. that this is Paul's. Yeah, very God much means. to be read together, aren't they? Yeah, like yeah. Of throwing light one on the other. So right, it's right. But, uh, but it's wonderful, wonderful material. Uh, yeah. And if we are talking about uh, Ephesus, then uh, mm -hmm. that was no uh, no small city. It was great, no. uh, great city, and a lot of. Uh, yeah. Believers there by this yes. time, by the time he yes. tried, and a strong Greek pagan influence too that Paul has to work against always. Right, right. And Diana of Ephesus was very famous, you know, so it was a pagan yeah. center. You can uh, you can read the background for uh, the believers in Ephesus in Acts nineteen, I guess. Yes, and a lot right. of wonderful things to yes. how that developed there. Paul spent a lot of time over there. Apparently, he did. Yeah. Yes. And, well, let's begin. I think uh, he uh, he heads out and leads into his work here uh, as is typically uh, Pauline. He, yes, and yes. Uh, so here is his greeting. He said, "Paul, an apostle of Jesus of Christ Jesus." Really, I think mm -hmm. some texts read Jesus mm -hmm. Christ mm -hmm. by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, <laughs> there's all there's already so much packed into this. <laughs> we can't even get started, and, and this guy is just isn't it wonderful? Yes. You think about it. Yes. Uh, he was uh, an apostle of Christ Jesus. Yes, which means uh, he was one sent. Really, absolutely, uh, a delegate. Sent. Yes, uh, 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 an official, authorized, delegate, authorized, an empowered yes. uh, representative. And as you just said, he lets it be known who he is. There's yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No. Uh, he, it doesn't mean that he's more important than any other human mm -hmm. being in one sense. God is no respecter yes. of persons. Yes. On the other hand, here we're reading the words of this man. Mm -hmm. Indeed, he's many say, isn't that amazing? Yeah. God can have His chosen people if He wants to. He can do that. No, it doesn't yes. mean that He despises any human being. Sure. And uh, and it's fair to let uh, let your hearers know uh, who, who, who who it is they're fixing to read. You know, exactly. That's right. So he goes on then. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Mm -hmm. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> you know that you just launched into, in, as is well known in commentary, one of the longest sentences ever written by anybody. <laughs> I mean, in high school English, you'd be told to not write sentences that long. Paul just pours it out. <laughs> I know. What, uh, I've noticed that about Paul's writing. It, oh, yeah. It's like uh, whatever day they taught periods yes. in class, he, he missed that day. <laughs> he missed that day. <laughs> <laughs> so he just kept going. Uh, I love it the way he moves on and on, and then these. Yeah. sometimes he has these long parenthetical phrases. Yes, but, of too. course, he didn't have the parentheses marks, as it were, uh, That's in, right. uh, in Greek. So, and, But... Uh, 
But it's beautiful stuff. It's beautiful stuff. It. It's so re he's so full of, of the excitement yes. of all this. He just pours it, keeps pouring it out. And you can sense it in his words. Oh, absolutely. Can't you? Yeah. I think it's worth commenting on Christ Jesus in that order. Messiah Jesus. Mm -hmm. We have to remind the public, I think, who many of whom have forgotten that Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. This whole New Testament is a Jewish thing. We That's need right. to get that absolutely clear. Yeah. So Messiah Jesus is not just as the Jesus Christ, you know, was the son of Mary and Joseph Christ, as we said, that's <laughs> yeah. quite wrong. He's Messiah Jesus, mm -hmm. and that carries a whole lot of information, that Messiah Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's writing to saints, people who are believers, so he's yes. not writing to the outsider not directly, mm -hmm. anyway, though. Uh, right. but, uh, but I like what he said again in his introduction, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the way Paul consistently, over and over again, makes the distinction between God, oh, who yes. is the Father, yes. and our Lord, who yes. is Jesus Christ. Isn't that beautiful? I, I, I like that. That needs to be emphasized tremendously in our time. In, indeed. Because people have not observed, as in verse 3, that God is the Father. He said it twice, hasn't he, in verse 2. God is the Father. That's right. He actually says this uh, in the New Testament 1,300 times. <laughs> the word otheos in Greek, sometimes without the article, right. is equivalent to the Father. You'd think right. that people would get the point that God is the Father. Right? <laughs> but th not only that, you've got of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that, of course, is straight from Psalm 110.1. The Lord said ah. to my Lord, right. our Lord... You even have in the Old Testament, my Lord David, my, our Lord David, the king. Mm. It's the purest messianic title. And nobody can say in the Hebrew Bible, our Yahweh. My Yahweh is impossible. Nobody can say that. Right. So once you've got our Lord, you know you're not talking Yahweh. <laughs> not a second Yahweh. Right. That, that's impossible. No, our Lord Messiah, Jesus. That's this, is, this is that Lord in Psalm uh, 110 and 1. Absolutely. The Adonai, as it were. It's the, the Adonai. My, my Lord. I know. But not Yahweh. Not Yahweh. Yeah, of course. Uh, the public doesn't know these yes. easy things. But, that's right. You know, if you don't define the basic word, we said in, in class at the college sometimes, if you give a lecture on the USA and people think it's the United Stamp Association, <laughs> you're lost from the you've beginning. You've lost the point. So we have to define God equals the Father 1,300 times. And our Lord is really my Lord Messiah from Psalm 110.1, which is an umbrella text, stellar witness text for the mm. whole New Testament. Mm. It's very important to establish that. So here we found ourselves uh, at the outset yes. of this writing of Paul in Ephesians. Uh, once again, mm -hmm. it's framed by yes. Psalm 110 and 1. As uh, we've talked before, uh, in a way, uh, Psalm 110 and 1 is the frame for the entire it really is. message of the New Testament. Easy thing. Yahweh said to my, my Lord. Lord. And that capital L on the second Lord is actually the most catastrophic mistranslation yeah. in yeah. most yeah. Bibles. Yeah. It should be a little Lord because Adonai is 195 times never a title of deity. Mm. But that's one of the most extraordinarily easy things. It's sort of hiding from the public. Mm. So take the second, the, the, the second Lord is little L, Adonai, right. my Lord the King. Right. It's beautiful messianic stuff, isn't it? It just breathes Jewish messianic material. But we Gentiles have to get uh, inducted into this whole messianic way of thinking. And, uh, and you know, then it's not hard to realize that the psalm does not say in Psalm 110 and 1, mm. Yahweh said to Yahweh, Right. It, it, I mean, you could say that if, if that's, that's what right. those, some of these folks, uh, that's right. uh, uh, yes. some of the poor folks out there are, yes. are insistent on that. But actually, it's not Yahweh said to Yahweh. It, it could have said that. It does okay. not. That's right. Uh, so there's a yes. problem with that idea. Well, it's, you know? yes. And then Paul's yes. carrying it through correctly here. God, our Father, and the Lord, Adonai, yes. type Lord, right. <laughs> uh, curiosity, yes. Uh, yes. and the Lord, Messiah Jesus. It's amazing because he's done that exactly. He's got the Lord Jesus in verse 2. Mm -hmm. But then he defines it as our Lord Jesus. Made it back to Adonai. Wow. But the sad thing is, Dan, that the translations you see have induced people to read Yahweh says to Yahweh. Because they've <laughs> yes. got a capital L on that second Lord, which normally translates Adonai, which is the Lord God. But it's not a capital L. So that, I say, is like John 1.1, 1, 1, the catastrophic capital W on word. Right is equal to the catastrophic capital letter on that second Lord. I mean, what's in a capital? Somebody wrote an article on the curse of the capital. <laughs> How true that is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not saying little things here. These yes. are very major points. Huge things. Huge things. If, if, we, if we want to have any chance of uh, understanding and grasping mm -hmm. uh, the Scriptures, the Bible correctly, the New Testament yes. as well as the Old, yes. we've got to get this framework set. Uh, I like that. You know, Yahweh speaking yes. to... 
this human Messiah, yes. Jesus. Yes. Psalm 110 and 1. And yes. Paul's just verifying it right yes. down the line here. In the Can we say this? The whole point, in a sense, of the Bible is missed. If it's God being reconciled to God. <laughs> yeah. I thought the whole deal was Adam needed reconciliation. So guess what? The second Adam That's right. is the story of how man can be reconciled to God as is perfectly true in That's the right. case of Jesus. Yeah. Once you say he's not really a man, but really God dressed up as a man, right. you in a way have undermined the entire point of Scripture. You're, you're losing the whole storyline. Wow. The, the whole storyline of the Scriptures and the, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I love it. And, and this nonsense, if I may be so bold as to say, mm. about uh, he had to be a God-man to do these things. It's not right at all. Yes. Uh, what uh, he had, what had to be done to do these things, to accomplish our salvation and these wonderful things, it took not a God-man, but it took God and a man. Yes. His son, the Messiah Jesus. It's this is son. so wonderfully simple, too, when you're saying that. I'm immediately thinking of 1 Timothy 2.5, you know, where Paul, again, is making a creedal statement. Yes, yes. I wish people would go to the creedal statements in the Bible to decide right. on the creed. They don't. They right. go everywhere else. Right. <laughs> but there is one God, the Father, clearly, in 1 Timothy 2.5, and one mediator between that one God well, and that's man, right. the Messiah Jesus Christ himself, a man. I mean, Paul really, I think, was living in, in our century and anticipating the chaos mm -hmm. that was going to come from this confusion over well, who God is, which goodness. we're trying to undo. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I think we can rest assured that if Paul were here today, yes. he would be setting about uh, exactly as he did then, Indeed. setting forward uh, yes. God, who is our Father, yes. and the Lord, yes. who is Jesus Christ. And this Absolutely. one who is Lord was made Lord by God. Yes. You know the right. the Acts two thirty six uh, exposition mm -hmm. by uh, by Peter, mm -hmm. but uh, yes. it's uh, beautiful stuff. I think it's wonderful. It is. It's I think when one gets those definitions right, that there's one God the Father and one man Messiah the Second Adam, the Bible comes alive in a new way. And yes, are absolutely. That. Yeah, and then every everything uh, takes on a new uh, new oh, yes. light. It, it as it does here. You can't even begin the Book of Ephesians without. Ooh, there it all is. It is. And the devil is busy saying, man could not be that good, you see. And Jesus <laughs> Christ, look at the miracles he did, you know, he still the, the, the waves and so on. No man could do that. Well, wait a minute, what if God authorized that man <laughs> yeah. to do that? God gets to decide he what's gets. good enough. Yes. That's right. Not us, not yes. our, uh, our tortured theology. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, but, uh, and then verse 3, uh, mm -hmm. Anthony, I love mm -hmm. what... Um, what Paul had said there. And in fact, this is one of my favorite verses, and mm -hmm. sometimes I, I use this as my salutation, but blessed be the God and Father mm -hmm. of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is. Wow. I, I think that's, mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. And uh, it's very comforting yes. to me. I enjoy, yes. uh, enjoy that that. That one phrase, and yes. uh, I remind myself of it very often. Blessed be the God yes. and the Father of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Not God and God, but right. God and the man Messiah. It's interesting that Jesus' self favorite self-designation was Son of Man. Yes. He anticipated the nonsense that was going to come, <laughs> using your word, and it's a good word in this yes. case. The confusion, the tortured arguments that proceeded from the second century through the church father. I mean, oh my goodness. such difficult stuff about yeah. eternal generation. Oh my land. And Jesus was man but not a man. Right. The, <laughs> the public doesn't know yes. that when it gathers in church, it's gathering under that extraordinary umbrella mm -hmm. of Jesus that they're worshipping, and rightly, as Messiah, you can worship him as Messiah. But he's man, according to the creeds, the official post-biblical creeds. He's man but not a man. Yes, yes. Wait a minute, excuse me. I thought <laughs> Jesus was rather obviously... A man yeah. in Scripture. In fact, uh, if he wasn't a man, everything's <laughs> off because it wasn't it wasn't God who who had sinned. It wasn't yeah. God that had the problem here. It wasn't God that needed to be a sacrifice. It, it was mankind that had the problem. Yes, and it was mankind who had sinned in Adam and on, and uh, so it took a man uh, to to do this, and not a God man or an angel man, right. but a man, one right. of us. Truly, one of us, Isn't that in order to bring this about, so, and yes, then uh, exactly right. and the, everything rests on that. So the the storyline has been completely confused and uh, and it's turned right. by uh, yes. later church tradition. It has. Uh, we got to get back to the, this original stuff. 
the plot, and, as you say, has been ruined. Isn't yes. It? We all get very bored with it, with a story when the plot is not clear. That's right. And so the plot is lost. The moment you say Jesus is Michael, for example, oh, I'm goodness, thinking yeah. of our friends at the door, who are really quite mistaken, because after all, Hebrew says, to which of the angels did God at any time ever, ever, ever say, you're my son? Never, once. But that doesn't stop then millions of people believing that Jesus is yeah. Michael, the archangel. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Uh, I guess uh, you just ignore... Uh, the fact yeah. that uh, he never said that to any angel because <laughs> <Right. laughs> you just don't want it to be that way. So, <laughs> that's like the Psalm 110 and 1. And you have folks out there, uh, sometimes, yeah. suppo I suppose, learned people, yes. uh, but uh, saying that uh, that is effectively Yahweh said to Yahweh. Yes. They ignore the fact that it's really Ad and E. It, absolutely. And because they don't want it to be that way. But that's there right. it is. You know, it's just. Uh, well, they've even argued that the Masoretic pointing, you know, the points, the vowel points, which were put in later, that they must be wrong. Then. <laughs> well, there's no evidence for that. Of course at not. At all. Not, no basis at all. No basis. Other than the way they wish it was That's and right. they want it to be. That's so. right. <laughs> We're extraordinarily good at making the Bible say what we think it really ought to say according to our That's church right. tradition, right? That's right. Uh, people sometimes spend a lifetime devoted yes. to that, uh, uh, to doing that, to making sure the Bible says what we what need we for it to say. What we in the church have decided but it must say. Don't we have to get back to letting the Bible speak to us? So. Let it talk to us instead of us uh, overlaying it yes. with our uh, our traditions yes. and oh my goodness yes, yes. Mm. Uh, but then again he uh, he launches into this uh, very mm. uh, I would say cosmic this very powerful oh, yes. cosmic glorious word. picture mm. uh, this this uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And then he goes in, even as he chose us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that we should be holy and blameless before him. Mm -hmm. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, uh, to uh, the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. How many times is this in Christ, yes. in the beloved, in, in yes. him? Uh, I love this. And, yes. uh, uh, so in, in verse 7, uh, I love this verse. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's a particularly powerful mm -hmm. statement. In him we have redemption through his blood, mm -hmm. the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. So wow. So what is he telling us here? He's going all the way back to the beginning, isn't he? Yes. And, then, and bringing us up to speed. With a sense of purpose, isn't it? Yeah. It's exactly John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was God's great plan and purpose, and all of that then unfolded eventually, in due course, in time, in Christ. The mistake that was made by the early church fathers was that they kept reading the sun back into the past, <laughs> creating two Yahweh's eventually. And that has really been a blight on the system, mm -hmm. I think. Well, the, the moment that they decided uh, that uh, Christ would be a pre-existent being, yes. we've been thrown into confusion and, uh, and never recovered, really, never, from right. that. Uh, it's, right. it's hopeless confusion, yes. it's hopeless complication. They yes. can't even really very well uh, deal with the issue about, okay, so if he was back there literally... That's right. Then literally, who was he? Yes. We're never quite sure. So sometimes you see him say, well, he was an angel yes. back there. Yes. This angel was actually him kind of incognito, yes. I guess. And yes. all that. It, this is all just complex. A, yeah, complex. Right. When in reality, uh, I love everything that Paul is saying here, I think leads to verse 7 at that point. Mm -hmm. In him we have redemption mm -hmm. through his blood. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a flesh and blood true human being. That's right. For goodness sake. Yes. As we were saying earlier, it was it was humans that that had uh, that had sinned. Yes. It was humans that had the problem here yes. and needed to be able to uh, to come back to God. And so it took it took a human being to get us into this mess, Adam. <laughs> That's right. And it took a true human being to get us out of this and oh. and back to exactly peace right. God. Yeah. It's interesting, as you said, the word blood there. Then this is a human being. Since God cannot die, it's absolutely yes. impossible for God to die. All the signals here are, this is a man. Absolutely. Blood here. Absolutely. And the blood not only is the death of Jesus on the cross for our sins, that's well known, it's also the ratification of the covenant. There are so many words here that for Paul, 
could be expanded. I mean, they were right. naturally expanded in his mind, but the public doesn't always hear this. So sure. they forget that the covenant of the kingdom, in fact, in mm. 22, is inaugurated, yes. is ratified by his death, mm. as well as our personal mm. Mm. forgiveness of sin in the death of Christ. Wow. It's just a powerful. Paul is uh, he's anchoring us in here, isn't he? Oh, he's, yes. uh, He's taking you all the way back to the beginning. He said, you know, God determined, Mm. he was way ahead of time. Mm. He could foresee, he could Mm. determine some things that were going to happen in the future. And uh, and God determined because of what he foresaw. He he determined that, uh, uh, as Paul said, he chose us in Christ. All of this, of course, was future. Yes. we weren't there, and literally we were not there, and That's neither right. was Christ there in the beginning. That's very important. But all of this came about in, yes. uh, in the future uh, from, uh, exactly. from the beginning, from Adam. And, uh, but by the time Paul is here, he's able to say, now it's happened. We have it here. That's we right. see this. Christ has come, the so Messiah. Could we say then that we, we pre-existed? If you want to argue pre-existed, <laughs> well, that's right. we... Yeah. Christians now were in Christ before the foundation of the Absolutely. world. Absolutely, that's right. We were all foreknown, in fact, foreknown, but not pre-existing. Sure. And likewise, then in First Peter, Jesus is foreknown. There's yes. a difference in foreknowledge and pre-existence, a total yes. category. And people, uh, people get into uh, terrible confusion by yeah. confusing those two yeah, things. You know. Pre-existence and, yes. and foreknowledge are quite yes. different things. Absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. The fact is that human beings have to begin in the wombs of their mothers. That's, <laughs> yes. that's a fixed datum, isn't that's it? That's right. No wonder then the New Testament begins with the genealogy of Jesus, Messiah, yeah. son of David, son of Abraham. That's right, that's right. The attempts, you know, of the New Testament to keep us on track are very powerful, mm-hmm. but despite all that, we decided to go our own way from the second century onwards and got ourselves in a muddle yeah. over who God and Jesus are. Well, you know, and uh, we have out here, particularly in the, uh, in the Eastern religions, we have this uh, this notion of incarnation, yes. where that people are being born, but yes. presumably from some other super state that they were in. <laughs> now they're being born as a as a human being or yes. as some other being, and later on they'll be reborn again. As some this is strange, but it's incarnation, With a uh, and then right. sometimes uh, reincarnation, that's if you exactly will. Right. So we got people coming into. Yes these states of being. Yes. But that's not a scriptural view at all. It's too complicated. And now, yeah. unfortunately, uh, mm-hmm. this idea crept us into mm-hmm. Christian uh, mm-hmm. tradition mm-hmm. so that we now have it, at least as it relates to Jesus in particular. That's and right. so, uh, yeah, he was incarnated from some other... This this is not Christian. That's not true it, it Christian in the, in the a, biblical sense. It's not human if you really exist before you're born. That's you right. You cannot be human. You can dress up and right. pretend to be human. But you're talking about capital I, incarnation. Mm-hmm. We can say that Jesus is what the word, little w, what the word, the plan, the, the wisdom of God became. He's walking sure. wisdom. But once you make him pre-exist as God the Son, you've then doubled... The Shema, you've got two Yahweh's instead of one. You've got a divided Jesus who's part man, part God. Everything's divided into two, Mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So he then is kind of an avatar, as you mentioned (laughs) indirectly, (laughs) an avatar arriving from heaven. Matthew and Luke knew nothing about that. So I think our cry uh, from our position is get back to Matthew and Luke. Start with the origin of Jesus in Matthew and hang on to that. And then don't put a capital W on John 1.1. Just call it word, wisdom, and so on. Then all is clear. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, I think part of what we're fighting for, uh, yeah. and uh, is the reality uh, of, of human beings as true human yes. beings beginning, yes. originating in, that in the in the womb of, of our mothers, exactly. and that's that's our beginning yes. point, not at some pre-existent time. Exactly. And we're fighting for the same thing regarding our Lord Jesus Christ, exactly right. to be truly a human that's being, right. truly one of us. He right. had to begin yeah. as we do. Yeah. In the in the womb of his mother Mary, yes, and this preexistent, this literal preexistent. I mean, God could foresee us all. Surely, uh, I think He did, and that's what Paul's mm-hmm. saying here. But foreseeing us doesn't mean we were there. It doesn't no, mean no. we were back there literally, and neither was He back there literally, though He was certainly. That's exactly right. The the plan of God from the yeah. beginning was rich about yes. Him yes. and us. Yes. And us I would are think so. in Him. Yeah. How, how to give human beings immortality. Yeah. And that's yeah. not, nothing to be sniffed at, is it? <laughs> that's right. Anybody interested in living forever and ever, you'd think so. Well, this is the story. The other point, I think, is it's, it's huge in our contemporary world. When you look at the Muslims, who are totally offended by doubling God into two or three. <laughs> yes. And then the, the, the Jews, of course, are kept 
at far distance from mm. Christ and mm. the Bible because they think you have to believe in Jesus equals God. That makes two gods. So we're talking huge numbers of human mm. beings currently who are offended by what for us is a perversion of Christianity, Surely. not the original form as the, it appears uh, in the New Testament. Uh, this uh, this post-biblical uh, development yes. uh, of Christian tradition is right. just doesn't work. It's not. Uh, no, it's a tragedy actually. And again, then verse seven to me is just mm -hmm. pivotal. I love mm -hmm. this. Uh, it's it's kind of saying it all. Paul is saying in Him, that is in, yes, Christ, in Christ, we have redemption mm -hmm. through His blood, mm -hmm. the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace, and. Uh, so um, that is that man, Christ Jesus, the one of us right. who stands for the exactly. rest of us in the presence of and, God. And he did indeed die on our behalf. We need to insist Absolutely. on that because yeah. there were some who mistakenly felt that the death of Christ was only a moral example. It's more than no. that. No, but certainly. for the grace of God, we would be on the cross. Sure. Our sins are borne by Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. And we see that affirmed in verses just like verse 7 here and many, many other verses yes. which, uh, and statements in our, 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 script, our Bibles. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very, uh, very wonderful. It is. So then this grace, uh, mm -hmm. verse 8, mm -hmm. which he lavished upon us mm -hmm. in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan mm -hmm. for the fullness of time mm -hmm. to unite all things in him, that is in Christ, yes. things in heaven and things on earth. Yes. So all the plan of God for humanity, for our planet, all is focused on yes. this one man, Christ Jesus. It's a nice, easy idea, isn't it? Yeah. No complication. One who is to head up, as we say in modern... Uh, in modern terms, to head up the whole plan is the man Messiah Jesus. Mm -hmm. Even the angelic world is in some sense reconciled too. The holy angels don't yeah. need to be reconciled, so he's going to deal with the demonic forces. Surely. Everything's going to be at one in Christ. Yeah. Very easy. We don't have to worry about various saviors. There's only mm -hmm. one key savior for That's the right. whole entire plan. That's right. Uh, and, and then uh, uh, alt uh, God ultimately above all. And, yes. And, and all this was God's plan. Right. He's the one that developed the plan and, and, uh, and made it come to pass, brought it to pass. You like the word administration there in 10. It has to do with the management of a house, a household mm -hmm. management. The whole thing is going to be managed <laughs> from God ultimately through, always the ya in the Greek, through Christ. That's what yes, is happening yes, now. Yes. Right. Very clear. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. In him we have obtained an inheritance, yes. having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, yes. so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. Mm -hmm. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, mm -hmm to the praise of his glory, to we acquire possession of that inheritance. I like that very much because he clarifies what might possibly be misunderstood in verse uh, 11. We've obtained an inheritance. We must say that the inheritance for the Christians is always future. Yes. And this is no exception because he, I hadn't noticed it till you read it there, in the next verse down in 14, almost the next verse, until we acquire that thing. We yes. haven't acquired it. We, the marginal reference in the New American Standard update updated version, the marginal references are excellent. Mm -hmm. We've been made into a heritage. We're God's heritage and we haven't inherited this. Mm -hmm. We're heirs of the kingdom mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and we don't inherit the kingdom until Christ comes back right. to make us rulers in fact, not just sort of uh, subjects and, and citizens mm -hmm. in that kingdom but to make us the supervisors along with Christ of that kingdom. Isn't it interesting? So we have work to do in that kingdom. Yes. We're, we're not going to, uh, as the saying would be, uh, sit around and uh, Piddle away our lives. Uh, uh, <laughs> That's right. uh, what was the saying? Polishing rainbows. And That's right. That, that could get pretty boring after a while. I think. Famous yeah. Billy Graham statement: <laughs> We're going to tend heavenly gardens in heaven yeah. and polish rainbows. I don't think so. I think I'd rather not have that, actually. Right. Uh, uh, even this life is kind of more interesting than polishing oh, rainbows, absolutely. I think. Absolutely. That's, absolutely. That's right. now that, we must insist on, on the reality and content of hope. Yeah. After all, hope is the second great virtue. And even in, in Colossians 1.4, the fascinating verse where Paul says that love is based on hope. 
Mm. People are puzzled by that. How can that be? The hope is so clear that we're going to fix the world. First mm. Corinthians 6, 2, yes, we're going to yes, fix yes. the world. Don't you know the saints are going to manage the world? Now that gets my attention. Yes, so yes. what sort of people should we be now if we're expected to be in the divine government mm. that's going to be under the supervision right. of Jesus when he comes back? This is a huge and exciting challenge yes. for us all. Well, I, I think it's very, it, it casts a whole new light on things. Yes. Uh, yes. In, uh, in, I know in the tradition that I grew up in, you, you thought about kind of, okay, so when, when you die, you're going to go to heaven and then kind of sort of do nothing much. <laughs> you know, we don't know what we do. But actually, uh, the true picture is much more dynamic than that, isn't it? We're That's actually wonderful. going to be very busy, very yes. active, uh, yes. accomplishing things for Absolutely. the boss. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Christ Jesus, yes. uh, who will be the boss yeah. forever. Uh, but yeah. all of this under the one who is overall uh, God. This is, this is worth well. emphasizing, I think, Dan, because every human being, to listen to the current discussions on politics, everybody wants to fix the world. and they, <laughs> They've right. all got their ideas how to make this place better. Right. Wait until Jesus shows us the way to do it mm. fully. And then we can exercise our God-given talents, and we better be developing them now, mm. because not doing anything with your talents is fatal to your entrance into the kingdom in the parables of Jesus. Mm. And so the teaching of Jesus behind this, by the way, sometimes people don't realize that Paul is only reflecting what Jesus had already said. Uh, yes, it. yes, yes. Not to right. be separated from Jesus, heaven surely, forbid. Surely. So we're fixing the world in the future based on what we do now, I think. Mm. That's really challenging, isn't wow. it? Makes it much more It is. So we're already into the world-fixing business, yes. but on a lesser scale yes. than is actually That's going right. to become the case. That's when, right. Uh, yeah, in, that, That's in the right. kingdom of God on earth. On earth. On a on renewed, a renewed earth. earth. Like a new earth. So That's the right. mistranslation in the King James there in Second Peter, which says the whole world is going to be burned up, is quite wrong. Yeah. After all, there was a new heaven and a new earth after the flood. It didn't mean the globe had disappeared. That's right. It was a new system of things. Right. The devil is very keen to get rid of our inheritance. He doesn't yes. like the time when Jesus is going to rule the world and he's going to be bound. That's not his favorite idea at all. Yeah. So he's tried to get rid of it even by some mistranslation. You know, I'm, uh, I find uh, my, my mind is going back to, we talked about this inheritance, as you are mentioning there, and uh, the Romans 8, 17 thing. And uh, it's wonderful. Paul talking, again, Paul talking about inheritance. Absolutely. But, uh, but we have this uh, inheritance. We're co-heirs with Christ, Excellent. he says there. Excellent. Isn't that more of this? It's the, it's the it's same his. thing uh, in, in both instances. Uh, and uh, yes. Paul is telling the Romans, and here he's telling the yes. Ephesians. But we are co-heirs. Yes. We're not just heirs or like heirs of our own merit or our own self, right. but we're co-heirs right. with Christ, yes. the, the Messiah, yes. the one that God chose to be the yes. leader uh, of the rest of us. That That's wonderful. wonderful, isn't it? And the Savior of the rest of us. I think somehow Ever. theology in its, worst, in its worst form has distanced us from Jesus. It's all right for him. He can do all that. But wait a minute. You're involved also. So the Psalm 2 about disciplining the nations by uh, the rod yes, of iron yes, yes. applies in the book of Revelation to Jesus and to the saints sure. equally. Sure. My goodness, that's a bit of an honor. So we're the royal family in training. Where the aristocracy, if you like, it sounds pretentious, but it's biblical <laughs> yeah. of the world to come. So the point today is then what does this mean for our present lives? We better show ourselves worthy, dare I say, that's Paul's phrase, worthy of entering the kingdom. We better shape up, you know, make sure we're fit rulers of that coming kingdom. And actually that's a theme that's running you all the way back oh, from Psalm huge. 2 uh, and, and on. Uh, you find it rooted there. You find it uh, all through... Uh, like what Paul's telling the Romans and what uh, he's telling the Ephesians here as we're reading. Yes. Uh, but then we find it in Revelation. Uh, we're yes. going to reign with him. Yes. Isn't that something? Second Timothy 2, uh, 12. Who are we? We're, we're nobodies. And exactly. yet, uh, yes. this wonderful uh, right. uh, state that we have, a challenge too, because oh, yeah. with him, oh, yes. we are, as you say, going to fix the world. Yes. We will do this, uh, and, and yes. all creation will be brought yes. ultimately back yes. to peace with God through Jesus Christ. That's we're going on now, oh, yes. but it's going to go on then, and we're going to be a part of that. And yeah. are a part of it's it in a way right now, even this even now. this ministry of reconciliation that's been committed to us. This is the beginning of a huge reconciliation program that goes right to the end of the book of Revelation. Yes. Even there you have the nations being healed with the leaves, mm. it's still in process, yes. and then the curtain is drawn on Revelation, but... God is in a huge reconciling mode, isn't mm -hmm. he, through Christ. Thankfully, isn't that Thankfully. wonderful? Well, doesn't it break your heart to watch the news?
news, you know, when you see these people killing each other in the Middle East, yeah. for example, oh my goodness, it's yeah. absolutely tragic, or people shooting each other in schools. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to stop. This We're is, going to have the power right. to say, that's you right. cannot do that right. and get away with it. That's right. No more guns mm -hmm. killing each other. Yeah. That's not what we're going to do in the kingdom. And I, I think it's clear that uh, do as we will, and, and people do. They, mm -hmm. they strive to do well in many ways. Yes, they do. These uh, sorts of, uh, of terrible things will not cease in this present age. That's right. All the way through to the end, there is going to be this sort of, of terrible uh, mm -hmm. event, these, uh, these horrible uh, uh, things taking place. Uh, the shootings, the, yes. the, the the harm that humans do one to another. It's going to go on, mm -hmm. even though uh, as as reconcilers mm -hmm. in Christ, we, we want to participate in doing what we can yes. to bring the message of hope, but particularly that future hope. It, this will be brought to rest and peace in Christ Absolutely. when he returns. Yes. It's all going to be brought to peace. And this and is not just academics, that. too. That's right. This is, you're speaking of hope here. And again, hope is the second great virtue based on, uh, in fact, he says faith and love are grounded in hope. And so I'm thinking, if you diminish the hope of Christians, guess what? You're diminishing the faith and the love. Wow, yeah. Often congregations are supposed to be more loving. You know, I've got to be better. You've got to be, <laughs> you're not good enough chaps yeah. yet, as That's we would right. say in England. <laughs> What if the content of hope is not clear to those people? Oh, wow. Okay. It diminishes the whole exercise, I think. Yeah. So by understanding and apprehending hope, mm. oh, yes. love becomes ah, more, uh, more uh, almost intuitive then at yes. that point. That's it right. becomes, That's it right. becomes much uh, freer, yes. much easier. Yes. Wow. I yeah. think it's an important uh, thing for preaching. Because if people say it's just academics yeah. and everybody. Yeah. No, no. It's, it's the reality of the energy and health of a church group mm. that they grasp the hope, mm. not have a vague idea of playing harps on pink clouds is <laughs> yeah. what I imagined as a schoolboy, you know, if I ever had a theological thought at all, which was rare mm. in those <laughs> days, it would be to play a harp solo on a pink cloud. And I thought, this is very dull. The fun of life is other people, isn't it? Yes. The activities yes. of this earth. Well, God has not finished with the earth yet. Yeah. If he has finished with the earth, then the original plan failed forever. Yeah. And he said, well, plan B is we all do it in heaven. Yeah. No, it has to be resolved in the paradise to come That's on right. the earth. Yeah. Uh, uh, getting this thing back to the order in which yes. God set it in the yes. beginning and uh, set it with Adam, though Adam failed, mm -hmm. but now we have this this uh, second Adam, as it yes. were, yes. Uh, the second man Adam. Absolutely. Uh, again, truly one of us, mm -hmm. and yet uh, he has not failed and will not and fail. And will not fail. Yes, uh, I love that. It's a good so hope is wonderful and hope, I think, uh, I like your thought, yeah. hope when we apprehend it and mm -hmm. we begin to live it. Yes live in it, yes. leads to love. That's and an amazing I statement, like isn't it? Lot. It's Colossians 1.4. Yeah. I'll, I'll repeat the text again. Yeah. Somebody can look it up sometime, yeah. but yeah. that's a marvelous statement. Commentators are very puzzled by that. <clears throat> they don't see how faith and love could be based on hope. <clears throat> but when you realize the content of hope is much greater than we learned in church. I like it a lot. It's a good point. So hope is more than just something we conjure up within ourselves that's emotionally. Right. Or that. that's hope right. is a reality yes. to be thought on and considered mm -hmm. and taken in and yes. and Lived enjoyed out. and by if we really focus on that hope like that we want others to have it also oh, yes. and we our love of the hope our love of what is yes. to come then yes. flows over onto those around us and I, I like that. well that's right we've lost it in in fog language you know we talk easily about the glory of the future and that's mm -hmm. fine but they people don't notice that glory in the synoptics in the Matthew Mark and Luke is a synonym for the kingdom whether you say we're going to inherit the glory, inherit the kingdom, inherit the earth. Now, those are the words that get left out. Like <laughs> yeah. You can say to the public, you know, blessed are the meek, they're going to inherit the, what is it now? The earth. The earth. I never <laughs> thought of that before. I have these conversations very often with people. They never thought, well, that's rather interesting. I mean, yeah. the earth is the location. And then my cousin, J.T. Robin, Robinson, we mentioned it earlier, says heaven in the Bible is nowhere the destination of the dying. <laughs> Those are true words spoken from Cambridge, by the way. Yeah.